Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're having a look at a really exciting add-on called Snap Measure. As I make videos on Blender and other 3D design, people sometimes make the mistake of thinking I have a clue what I'm doing about Blender, and decide that they want to send me an add-on before it's released to have a look at and comment on. And the creator of Snap Measure did that, and to say I was excited about this add-on was an understatement, and I've been really waiting to be able to show this off. Now, this is going to take more than one video because there's quite a lot to it. And the fact that it's called Snap Measure is kind of underplaying what it can do. And actually, it's massively underplaying what it can do. But we're just going to talk about the measuring features in this video. I'm going to quickly go through them. And in the next video, I'll talk about some of the other stuff that you can do. But I'll tease a little bit of that at the end. I also want to say that there is a discount code for 20% off. I'm going to put that on the screen about halfway through this video. So keep watching and see what this can do. But before we go any further, I want to compare this to what is its competition in inverted commas, and it's not really much of a competition. But if we just go to edit preferences and get extensions, if we type in measure, you can see measure it. You'll have to click install here. And I just want to quickly show what measure it does. So if we just go N and view, we get measure it and we need to click show and then what we have to do is go into vertex mode select i don't know two vertices let's select these hit segment and it gives us a measurement so in this instance it's two now annoyingly it's not two meters i don't have units on it so it's getting the units wrong already but you can change the units okay to be whatever it is i'm going to click it to automatic and that's basically it. And I can change the distances, so I can select here and then G and then X, and we can do things like that. So you can see the changes. You can change things about the lines. Annoyingly, you have to do that for each and every single line if you want to change it. For example, here I can change the text size, but it's gonna do nothing. It will just do it for the later ones. So for example, if I do here and click segment, that will be really big, but you can't do it for every single one, which is, well, annoying. The other thing that's really problematic about this is you can obviously only measure really between vertices and because of the way this works, if I come here and control and B and do a bevel, the measurements totally changed where it is. It's now over here. And the reason this happens, if we just come to this mesh debug and click vertices, is that this works off the numbering of the vertices. And every vertex gets given a number from zero in this instance up to seven because there's eight points on a cube. And if you bevel anything, it changes these numbers. So now that's moved. And if I do that, it basically adds all these vertices and messes up your measurements. So you have to do the measurements at the end, not while you're working, which is pretty much pointless at this point. Like, why would you want that? Now, what's really cool about Snap Measure is that it offers so much more. We don't have that limitation and it does way more besides. So let's come down to where we've got snap measure. It has its own panel. And I'll just show you some of the things that it can do. We'll start with the basics. You click start snapping and it will snap to things. So for example, corners or the middle of edges or the middle of faces. So you get way more options straight off. I can click here and then click here and you'll see we've got this. Just like measure it, we can go into our lines here and change things. For example, I could make this higher in the Z axis just so it's easier to see, which is probably a good idea. You can keep the names if you want to. So I've got the names showing, or you could have that turned off and you can change the font size and that will do it for everything. All of the measurements that you've already got done and the later ones. So you don't need to worry about doing things afterwards. You can have it just as two clicks. So I clicked and then clicked, or if you don't want that, you could have that turned off and then in this instance, you click and drag and then let go and it will have your distance. You can change all your lines as you want. I'm just gonna put two clicks back on and we could, for example, come down here. You can change the color. I might want that to be a blue or a purple color, whatever you want it to be. And we can delete lines as well. There's a lot more we can do with lines, but I'll come back to that in a second. Click stop snapping and then as before, we can G and move vertices around and it will keep the measurements going. So that's the very basics of this. It will measure whatever you want it to measure. Now, excitingly, it doesn't have to be done in edit mode. And you've also got some shortcuts. So I can control shift and V to start it, click there and there, and then right click to stop snapping. And we've got that there as well. 
but even though it's been done in object mode, I can still go to edit mode and move things around and it will still work. So it's been very, very well thought out how this is gonna function. The other things we can do, if I'm just gonna come over here, is we can measure angles. So if I just start snapping, we get some options at the bottom. So if I click and then click to here, if we hit Alt, we get some cool options where we can select the ends of vertices. So for example, I could click there and then put it to here, or I could put it to the midpoint if I want, or back here. But importantly, if I hold Alt and Control, I can click the center and just drag it to there. And it's now gonna show me the angle. So we've got an angle function as well. Now, I actually prefer the other way we can do angles. I'm just gonna come over here and we'll just do one line there and we'll do another line here. And if you want to keep these lines there, I can just hold Alt and Shift, click there and then click there and it links those lines together and say we want the angle. And again, if we select this and go into vertex mode, I can G and everything works. So some excellent functionality there and it just works very nicely. The other thing we can do if we come over here is that we have some other really nice things. If we come to our global settings, we've got other options here. In fact, actually, I might mention this. I'll mention this later, some of the other ones, but I won't do all of them. But we can also do projected measurements, which again, measure it can't do. For example, if we want to know the height of this, that's gonna be problematic. But because we can project, what I can do is just start snapping. So Control, Shift and V, click on this. So on this lock to the Z axis and just click there and we've now got our height. Once again, we can come to our line, but now this is annoying. It's all the way down under all of these lines. This is gonna take forever to get to. Isn't that annoying? Well, no, because actually, if we just hold down Alt and then we click here, it comes automatically to that line. So this is our line F that we've got. Okay, so it just jumps straight to that. If I click name, you can see that this is line F as well. So we can move this a little bit across to the Y. And as before, if I select this object and go into vertex mode, I can change things. Like I can just move this around and it still works everything out. It's linked everything together really nicely, even though it's not right on the vertex. Oh, and I should demonstrate that if we go into edge mode and control and B, we get none of those issues that we saw in Measure It where it can't work out what it's connected to. At this point, we're about halfway through the video, so I'm gonna throw up that discount code. There's a link in the description to the add-on, and that discount code will get you 20% off till the end of August. So if this is looking interesting to you, feel free to use that to save yourself some money. So let's get back to more of what this add-on can do. There are some other really nice functions. Again, this might be a me use case, but if we come to this object here, instead of bothering with selecting individual vertices, we could just say, I want to know the max Z there. And it color codes it the same as the different axes. So if I do the Y, it's in green, because Y is always in green, which is great. But what's important here, or at least for me, is that sometimes I'm worried about the size of an object because I need it to get into a certain space for 3D printing. This might be the size of a printer bed or whatever. So what's useful about these max versions is they're not actually linked to any vertices, though I can, again, go into face mode and change this, and you'll notice this will all nice and smoothly work with it. But what I can also do is Boolean things together, and it will encompass that within the size. And once again, I can still move this around and it will work perfectly. So if I need to know that I don't want anything ever getting bigger than five millimeters on the Z axis, this is a really quick way of working it out. Whereas previously I had to bring in a plane, put it behind, and then every so often check it and it wasn't very exact. So what else can we do? Well, we don't have to just measure on a single object. We can actually measure between objects. So if I control shift and V to start snapping, we can go from this point to this point. There we go. So we now know this distance. And even though we're not in edit mode, we're in object mode, let's just stop snapping with right click, I can still move this one around and it will tell us the distance or move this one around and it will tell us the distance. Awesome. What if I wanna move something around? Well, there are loads of settings here. Again, I'm not going through everything, but if we just come to this line, so I'm gonna control shift and V and then alt click on the line and it brings up the line. We've got some experimental things. This is still in sort of its beta version, which is probably why there's this 20% discount. But we can do things like, well, say we want the end points and the start points to be dynamic. So at the moment, this point, the end, is dynamic. I could turn that off, and then now I can just move it. 
let's put that back and resnap it and then now it's there so i could do the same thing for this bit so i could turn off the dynamic point at the start and then say actually i'm going to move this across so i want a snapping point now so i'm going to put a snapping point here at the start you can also do the end and the middle in fact let's put one in the middle as well there we go that's our middle point and you get these red points that will now allow this to snap to. So if I activate this again, Control Shift and V and press Control Shift and C, I can now click on this corner, move it to that point there. And that's done. I could do the same thing with this. Let's Control Shift and C and grab that center of that face and bring it to here. There we go. So massive amounts of utility here, so much power in terms of being able to set things up. And we can go further. We don't even need to have an object involved at certain points. For example, if we turn projected measure off, that's important. We could snap from the middle of this cube upwards. I'm going to hit Z and go somewhere there. So we've got this line. Let's just hold down Alt to select this one. So now it is there front and center. We don't have to scroll down to it. And I could say, actually, I don't want this 2.25. I want this to be three long. And because we can come down here and say that we want a snap point at the end. So there we go. We've now gained a snap point at the end. I could now control shift and C, grab this cube and place it onto the end of that line. So we can do this however we want to give us the perfect layout of where we want all of our objects to be. And I just realized this isn't particularly clear. We could make this even clearer because these snapping points don't just work for objects. We're still in snapping here. So I could click there and then go to here. And then let's alt and click that one just to bring that to the one that's at the top. And then we'll just have that lower in the Z direction so we can see that perfect distance to the midpoint. So we can snap our measurements off of the points on our line as well. Just really, really handy. As you mentioned, things don't have to be perfectly at the end points or the center. Let's once again hold down alt and we'll select this line now and let's manually put in a point. So I want something, let's call this 1.5, click add, and there we go. That was now 1.5 units along. So we gain a new snapping point anywhere we want on our line and it's measured from the start. And if I hold down alt, it will tell you in the line what the start is because the green is the start and the red is the end. So we can always just double check this even if you're coming back to a line to make sure you know which one is the start and which one is the end. Now I said we were going to end on something cool, which is one of the bits that gets me even more hyped about this add-on, and it's going to be the focus of the next video, and we'll look at examples of what we could do with this. But before we do so, there is a link to Snap Measure in the description. I'd really appreciate if you use that link. It is an affiliate link, which means it's going to cost you no extra, but a little bit of money goes towards help supporting the channel and giving me the time to make these videos. In fact, not only is it going to cost you no more, if you use that code, you're getting 20% off if you purchase this before the end of August. So this is what we're going to be looking at in the next video. And it's the fact that if we look at these lines, we don't just have the information about how far these objects are apart. We also have some experimental tools which we're going to look at and how we can manipulate. But these are really cool because not only can we tell how far objects are apart, we can also set the distance from them to be apart. So for example, here I want this to, let's say, be seven units apart. Hit that and now it's moved. So now we're seven apart. Or I could, instead of moving this object, I could move this one and it will move it. Or if I want to move both of them equally from the center point, we can do exactly the same very intuitively. Now, I think this is really cool and very quick and easy to use. And if you set this up right, because this won't just work with objects, it can work with vertices, this becomes very CAD-like. Now, where this gets insane is that this turns what normally would be destructive modeling into what I would consider non-destructive modeling. Here, this is our line A, we've got a circle that's been cut out of this cube and this has been applied. This was the cylinder here, but we've got no modifier. This is applied and the vertices are all here. So this is done. It's destructive modeling, except for with our experimental tools, we can change the size of this destructively created cylinder. So suddenly this becomes non-destructive modeling and you can edit this as much as you want 
after the fact. I'm sure you can appreciate the ability to do that and how much of a big deal this actually is, especially bearing in mind you don't have to do this at the beginning, you can set this up after you've made the circle destructively and then turn it back into something that's effectively non-destructive modelling. As I said, we're going to cover this and how to set it up in the next video. It's really quick and easy, and we'll look at some other bits as well. But if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, the bell icon, so you know when that video is out. I hope to see you in the next video, and have a great day.